we now compare the simulation of the linearized engagement to the nonlinear engagement developed in the previous section. This is Missile Guidance Fundamentals, Section 4, Module 2. We'll consider similar engagements to the nonlinear analysis of the previous section. The pursuer and target are initially on a head on collision course. Pursuer three times faster than the target. 10 seconds is the total elapsed time for this simulation based off of the range equation for the linear simulation that puts them initially separated at 40,000 feet. The target can accelerate. The pursuer then accelerates to achieve a collision course. That's the first disturbance case. The second is the heading error. So again, two cases of disturbances separately considered, heading error and target maneuver. To simulate, let's look at this from the vantage of the linearized homing loop. We have our target and pursuer. Differenced then integrated twice, multiplied by one over VC times time to go squared, and then differentiated gives us the line of sight rate. We assume we have no filter in the loop. In the line of sight rate equation, which is familiar from the previous module, we have time to go and the variable Z, which is the relative difference between the pursuer and target position in the vertical direction. That lambda dot line of sight rate goes into the pronav block, gets multiplied by the navigation gain and the closing velocity VC, which is constant in the linear simulation, just being the pursuer velocity plus the target velocity. The pronav law outputs the pursuer acceleration command. And then we assume that the pursuer immediately achieves the required command with just an identity block there. So this loop continues to be integrated until the final time. At the final time, user specified variable, the relative separation in the vertical plane between the pursuer and target is recorded, and that's the missed distance. Okay, to simulate, we first specify engagement conditions or parameters. That's things like pursuer velocity, target velocity, target acceleration, navigation gain, heading error, total time in simulation, or TF. We also need to specify the kinematic initial conditions. Now remember, our kinematics are in terms of the relative separation in just one dimension of the pursuer and target. We decomposed the kinematics last time into two equations. One was just the relative separation, that's the variable Z, and we denote its initial condition as Z naught. Then there's also relative velocity, Z dot, we denote that Z two here, uh, having separated the equations using Bernofsky canonical form, and the naught is just the initial time. Now again, from the small angle approximation, we can determine Z dot naught as simply minus pursuer velocity times heading error. So now that we have those initial kinematic conditions, we now enter the numerical integration routine. The first step is to compute line of sight rate. That's determined at the current time step. It's input into the kinematic equations where we can see the parameters AT, N, and VC in there. We determine the left-hand side of those kinematics, so that's relative velocity and relative acceleration of the pursuer and target at the current time step. We integrate that forward in time to then get the relative position and relative velocity of the pursuer and target at the next time step, Ti plus one. And we also update time to go, which is just final time minus the next time step, Ti plus one. That process of integration continues until we reach the final time or time to go equals zero, at which point we can record a missed distance. Let's first compare the acceleration commands of the linear and nonlinear simulation. Here's the plot of acceleration in G's versus time for the linear and nonlinear, where we have an initial heading error and no target acceleration with a navigation gain of three. Pretty good comparison not too far off. What about the accelerating target case? Heading error is zero. Now the target accelerates and suddenly we see a fairly large discrepancy. So two things immediately pop out at us. 
One, why the large discrepancy with the nonlinear simulation for the case of an accelerating target in particular? And two, why do we have this little step here at the end of the engagement? What's going on there? So in the denominator, we have time to go squared, where time to go necessarily goes to zero because we specify the discretization. So at t equals tf, time to go equals zero, and that singularity blows up lambda dot, unless we also have zero in the numerator of lambda dot. Well, the first term in the numerator, time to go times z dot, goes to zero because t to go is zero. The second term is the separation between the bodies. This should go to zero in theory, but because we're using numerical integration, there is an approximation error in that misdistance. So in effect, we have something essentially zero divided by zero causing a step. And this is the same thing that happened for our nonlinear lambda dot formula as well. It's an artifact of the simulation. Next question. Why the acceleration discrepancy between linear and nonlinear? Let's start with our pronav law. Acceleration command for the pursuer is navigation gain times closing velocity times line of sight rate. For the case of the 5G accelerating target, we got these curves for acceleration. Plot of the closing velocity versus time. There is a discrepancy. And then also lambda dot, which we saw in the previous chart, which has the form of the acceleration command. So which variable is dominant in our acceleration command? Well, clearly it's going to be the line of sight rate. We can pick it out by form, but also if you just look at the relative difference between the linear and nonlinear for each of these variables, it's clear we have here about a 35% difference just offhand. Here, 0.3, we have multiple factors difference. So this is the variable with the largest discrepancy between linear and nonlinear that's driving the discrepancy in the acceleration command. Now what would we expect for the heading error given that the acceleration command for heading error was so good? Well, here it is all at once. Three, closing velocity, uh, smaller discrepancy uh, overall, and then line of sight rate, very close. So again, the line of sight rate seems to be driving the, uh, the 20 degree heading air acceleration profile, although we do see a difference between where they intersect uh, according to this bias error and the closing velocity. So let's take this one step further. What is the cause of the discrepancy in the line of sight rate? Why is the linear not matching the nonlinear here? Now remember, we started with a nonlinear engagement and then we assumed that flight path angle, target heading angle, line of sight angle were small in order to linearize the engagement, essentially linearizing about a head-on collision course. So the thought then is that the acceleration case violates the small angle assumption. And that's why we have the discrepancy between the acceleration commands. The heading in our case then must not violate the small angle assumption. Well, let's take a look. These results are from the nonlinear simulation. The plot shown is for the 5G target acceleration. We have degrees versus time, target heading angle, green is pursuer flight path angle gamma, black is line of sight angle. Our linear approximation criteria, 10 degrees roughly, is here shown. So if we were to have a good approximation of the linear to the nonlinear, we would expect these curves to be under this line. 
and clearly they go way above the line. So this is a clear indication that these angles violate our linear assumptions. Now, the case of heading error only, the curves clearly are below the linear approximation criteria with the exception to the pursuer flight path, which is just ever so slightly above the 10 degrees at the final time. But now we see really the source of the error in the acceleration command. It's that we were violating the linear approximation criteria, and that's why we have that discrepancy between the linear and nonlinear acceleration commands. Now I've mentioned that miss distance from the linear simulation and the nonlinear simulation is always going to be zero unless we have a time delay somewhere in the homing loop. So we're going to replace this block, which was identity, with a low pass filter. We're going to call this a pseudopilot. And basically the effect is to pass through the acceleration command up to a particular frequency that's dictated by the time constant tau. So this tau represents time delay due to the vehicle dynamics, to the actuator rate limits, even the time it takes for the hardware on board the pursuer to process the ProNav acceleration command and generate a actuator deflection command uh, for the vehicle to achieve and then respond to. So here's our approach to compare miss distance between linear and nonlinear simulations. First, in our nonlinear simulation, we pick a type of disturbance, heading error or target acceleration, and we change the target initial position as an indirect way to change the total elapsed time of the engagement. Then in the linear simulation, note we're explicitly specifying the engagement time. So now we compare miss distance on the basis of common total engagement times. Okay, miss distance prediction for first the heading air case. Target acceleration is zero, navigation gain is four. This is the absolute value of miss distance versus total intercept time. Linear is in blue, nonlinear is in red. The autopilot or pseudopilot time constant is one second. And two things to note here one, the form. We have peak where there is a peak. We have an x-intercept for the nonlinear where there's a, roughly an x-intercept for the linear. So the form of the missed distance curves are, are good. So this is good for tra capturing trends with the linear engagement simulation. Second, there is a discrepancy on an absolute value basis of the missed distance between linear and nonlinear. 175 versus 225 fairly large percent difference in miss potentially for the 20 degree heading air case. But as time increases, uh, that does go, go down. Now, what about the case for the accelerating target? We know that's where we saw the largest discrepancy in the acceleration command between linear and nonlinear. So we might expect a fairly large discrepancy in miss distance. But surprisingly, the linear captures the nonlinear miss distance very well, even early on, running into a peak for the nonlinear where there's a peak for the linear, close to the same x-intercept on the curve. Again, peak where there's a peak, uh, a little bit of error and accuracy between linear and nonlinear, but for predicting trends and for a first pass at estimating miss distance, just based off of these experiments, it seems like the linear is doing a very nice job at capturing this important metric of merit. One other important dimension to all of this is how the missile time constant affects the acceleration requirement by the pursuer. So here's for the case of zero heading error and an accelerating target. The G is required by PRONAV on the vertical axis, the elapsed time on the horizontal, Here's the pseudopilot time constant, so a snappier, higher performance response in blue and the slowest response in black. And what we see is that the largest acceleration requirements are coming from the slowest pseudopilot or the slowest missile time constants. 
The same trend can be observed for the case of heading error. The largest acceleration requirements come from the more sluggish pursuers. And this makes qualitative sense because if the pursuer cannot achieve the acceleration command in time, then there's a larger deviation to the collision course and thus a larger acceleration command needed to correct the lead angle of the pursuer for collision. A lot of ideas have been packed into this video. Let's summarize some of them. Here's a table of the disturbance, heading error or target acceleration, and then the accuracy of the acceleration command from ProNav, closing velocity and line of sight rate, as well as missed distance. And this is accuracy in terms of comparison between linear and nonlinear engagements. The heading error, we saw high accuracy for acceleration command, closing velocity, and line of sight rate. But when it came down to miss distance, early on in the engagement, we saw moderate to high miss distance accuracy. The acceleration of the target caused poor to moderate acceleration command accuracy in the linear simulation, moderate closing velocity accuracy, and poor to moderate line of sight accuracy. But somehow, we had arguably high missed distance accuracy. To summarize all of this, we can't actually make a general statement about a heading air case making the linear engagement less valid than the accelerating target case. In general, that's just not true. Remember, we showed that the discrepancy in the acceleration command is really from the violation of the linearity assumptions, the small angle approximations. And this can happen for heading error or target acceleration. Through all of this though, the linear engagement is capturing the missed distance trends very well. So while accuracy is not guaranteed, the linear engagement analysis is excellent for analysis of trends the effects of introducing other subsystems into the loop, such as in this case, we introduced the pseudopilot. Later, you'll see that it's good for analyzing homing loop stability and also establishing rules of thumb for tuning guidance laws. So truly linear analysis is a staple of guidance analysis and is very important for going forward to more advanced topics. We'll also note that when assessing pursuer acceleration requirements with a linear ProNav simulation, we have to be very careful because significantly inaccurate acceleration requirements may be determined if the linearity assumptions are violated. We also introduced the idea of the pseudopilot to create missed distance in the simulation. The autopilot time constant also significantly affected the G's commanded by proportional navigation. And we found that the faster a missile could respond to a PRONEF command, the less acceleration was necessary for intercept. For further information on these ideas, check out Tactical and Strategic Missile Guidance by Paul Zarkin. This is Simulation of Linearized Engagements, Missile Guidance Fundamentals, Section 4, Module 2.